Welcome to Sad TV News. I am Alicia George. In our top stories, Dominica and Chile sign agreement for visa-free travel. Escaped murderer shot dead by police in Antigua. Sudan death sentence woman freed. And in sports, Dominican young footballers to participate in Barbados football training. Details of these will follow. Welcome back. On Monday, June 23rd, the government of Dominica and the government of the Republic of Chile signed an agreement for the exemption of visa requirements for holders of diplomatic and official passports. This agreement came to life following years of work by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to facilitate travel between both countries. According to Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Karen Prevo, at the second CARICOM Chile Joint Summit in February 2012, it was agreed that in order to facilitate the movement between Chile and CARICOM member states, the agreement on visa waiver exemptions for holders of diplomatic and official passports should be concluded between the Chilean and CARICOM member states. Subsequently, the embassy submitted a draft agreement to Dominica and by cabinet decision dated October 30th, 2013, cabinet advised approval for the signing of this agreement. We are here today to sign this agreement on Monday, June 23rd, during the visit of His Excellency Eduardo Bonilla, Ambassador of Chile to Dominica. Again, Ambassador, welcome, and we are very pleased to have you here and very excited to sign this agreement, which will facilitate travel between officials of the government of Dominica and of the government of the Republic of Chile. His Excellency Eduardo Bonilla, Chile's Ambassador to Dominica, noted it is very important for his country to sign this agreement with Dominica saying that it will facilitate the swift movement of Chilean and Dominican officials to each other's country. As you know very well, in this last year, the uh, diplomatic job is, a, is being changed. I mean, we have to move a lot and we, have, and we need to, to travel a lot. And so many times we have to do it in the, in the last five minutes. Mm -hmm. We cannot, we cannot plan it as we, as we like it. So, so this is a very important agreement for my country. Meanwhile, Minister for Foreign Affairs, Honorable Alvin Bernard, said this agreement is significant in addition to the fact that 2014 marks the 14-year relationship between CARICOM and the Republic of Chile. He noted that since then, Chile has become a very active player in the international forum in various aspects of international matters. The government of Dominica used this decision very uh, seriously and sees it as a critical aspect of cooperation between our two countries. We have made commitments, or the Chilean government has given commitment to cooperation in areas of agriculture, aquaculture, language training, diplomatic training or training of diplomatic officials, etc. We have not been able to take too much advantage of the cooperation in training, particularly because of the language barrier. However, we hope with continued dialogue, we might be able to find a way around this hurdle. Minister Bernard added, it is important that all hindrances for the free movement of officials are removed as in some cases one might have to travel at a moment's notice. On Wednesday, June 18th, the government of Dominica issued a $20 million 91-day treasury bill on the Regional Government Securities Market, RGSM. RGSM is a regional market for the trading of debt instruments of the member states of the ECCU established in November of 2002. The regional market allows all member governments to issue their securities throughout the member countries and beyond, allowing residents and non-residents to buy and sell the securities of their choice. The security was competitively auctioned which resulted in an oversubscription of $5.5 million and an interest rate of 1.99%. This auction saw a total of six bids, with three of these bids being successful. This is Dominica's second issue on the RGSM for 2014, with a total of 40 million being issued so far. 
The previous issue was administered on the 18th of March 2014, where a 91-day Treasury bill was also issued for $20 million. This issue was also oversubscribed and received a rate of 1.99%. The RGSM initiative was meant to enhance the investment options available to investors and is backed by the full faith and credit of the issuing government. Member states participating in the RGSM include Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, Monstrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Anessa Lura, a student from the Lighthouse Christian Academy, won the quarterfinals of the DBS Radio Ministry of Education and Quad-sponsored National Reading Competition. With 277 points, Lura beat 10 other competitors from primary schools across the island. We will turn them into snails. How dare they come to our hillside and listen to all we say? Betty and Robin popped their purple sweets hurriedly into their mouths. They looked at one another, and to their great astonishment, they couldn't see each other. Louise Aaron of the Pioneer Preparatory School came in second with a total of 269 points, while Felicia Jack of the St. Joseph SD took third place with 239 points. Meanwhile, one of the judges and marketing and outreach officer at the University of the West Indies Open Campus, Kimon Joseph, told the participants that although they were very good, there were still some lingering errors. So the narratives could be done much more exciting if the children put themselves in the story that they're actually reading. And there's not enough expression because they're not putting themselves into the stories that they're reading. We've also noticed that there is a rush for some children. They read too quickly. And because they read too quickly, they miss the punctuation marks. Um, so then there tends to be run-on sentences she also said that some students are reading much too slow and that their pronunciation needs work. Other students who placed included Jaquan Lequan of Massac Primary School, Jasnik Prosper of Jones Beaupere Primary, Jody Christmas of the Casa Bruce Primary, and Holly Christmas of the Campbell Primary. Ethan Elik of the Cynical Primary, Brent Hood Etienne of the Delicis Primary, Anaya Prince of the Temple SD and Hannah Fontaine of the Bagatelle Primary were the other competitors. Renowned painter and sculptor Roger Burnett on Friday, June 20th launched an art festival dubbed A New Lease of Life. The schedule of events which opened at the Old Mill Cultural Center will run until July 6th and will showcase paintings and sculpture demonstrations as well as host school visits and panel discussions. What you have here for the next two weeks is more than just paintings on walls and sculptures on plinths. It's a whole visual arts ex celebration. Uh, we have films, we have panel discussions. I will be demonstrating how I paint a portrait, how I sculpt a portrait. So there's really a lot of interest. We'll be open daily as from tomorrow for the next two weeks. The artist who migrated to Dominica from the United Kingdom in the 1970s said he is inspired by Dominicans and the country's natural attributes. Burnett says most of his work involves definition of the human body, prompting him to work with live models. Some of his students, he added, have branched out and are creating their own ideas. Jessica Bellevue, who for the last six months has been working with me, both on the sculptures and with the paintings. And Jessica herself, has branched out. I think I train people too well because for the first time on Dominica, Jessica will be offering a whole new idea and that is body cast. Persons who attended the exhibition were very much impressed, including lecturer Dr. Alwyn Bully. And it's been a long time since we've had an exhibition like this in Dominica where two different art forms are exposed and exhibited together as well as a subject matter um, in many cases, looking at the nude model, and um, you don't get this done very often, but it is a major part of art. These are the type of exhibitions that will actually help us to elevate in, in our minds and our thinking. I think the artwork on display tonight is very provocative and can be a bit controversial, but I really enjoy it. It's very artistic, it's very telling, and I think a person with an open mind can appreciate it very much. When we return, more stories. Welcome back.
The future of the Public Works Corporation, PWC, is still unclear as the Dominica Public Service Union, DPSU, who represents the employees, is yet to hold a meeting with the government following the government's announcement that the site of the corporation has been earmarked as the location of a five-star hotel. The meeting is also necessary to discuss the frequent delays in the payment of salaries, social security contributions, insurance for members, and payment of certain allowances, some of the many unresolved matters plaguing the corporation. General Secretary of the Dominica Public Service Union, Thomas Leta, says the issue of contracts being awarded to foreigners instead of the PWC also needs to be discussed. The meeting has not come through and from where I see it doesn't seem that this meeting will be coming through because we have been making several efforts to try to get a date for that meeting. But um, any projects that should that is being undertaken in the country, I think one of the things that the project should do is to create employment for, for locals because it's only when your local people are employed that um, the benefits of this of the projects can be seen in the economy. Because if they are employed, they are the ones who will patronize the shopkeepers, they are the ones who will patronize the bus drivers, they are the ones who will give somebody um, a day's work to repair their roof for them or to even work in their garden. Leta said while one appreciates the projects being undertaken on island and compliments the government for them, negotiations for such projects should allow locals to gain employment opportunities. The employees of the corporation last made their concerns be heard by staging protest action in January and March of this year. The DPSU had to take the matter to cabinet for the intervention of Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt. However, no action has been taken by the Prime Minister to date. That meeting, to me, is not forthcoming, and in light of the statement that was made, it means that we'll have to meet with the staff again and to decide how, how we deal with the situation. People are very saddened, people are not happy, people are um, being demotivated, and uh, it has made our work more difficult in that you have to continue to make representation on behalf of the employees, but at the same time, you also have to be aware that some of the things, the fact that things are not being resolved, they are being demoralized, demotivated, and we have that extra task of trying to ensure that they stay focused. Later added the union will soon meet with the PWC employees to decide their next course of action. Joseph, with a rendition of Whitney Houston's I Have Nothing, went home the winner of the inaugural DSC Got Talent at the college grounds on Friday, June 20th, 2014. Although competition was fierce with plenty of great performances, Joseph outshined the final five. I never, I never really, you know, put myself below anybody and also as a very spiritual person I always put God first and I know that whatever efforts that I put in, that is what I will get out. It runs in my family. My dad also was a singer in his time so I pretty much, it's genetic, let's call it that. It was an even shakier moment when the only two left on stage were Joseph and powerhouse Jessia Leta who came in second place. <laughs> I can't remember the auditions. I was nervous, but it just it's just one step and after you just cross that that step, like it can just go all the way. You can just go all the way, trust me. Meanwhile, Joel Challenger, faculty advisor for Dominica State College Ambassadors, 
says the first ever DSC Got Talent competition far surpassed his expectations. Speaking with Sat TV following the competition, Challenger revealed that he was satisfied with the outcome of the attendance and the level of performances. We started off thinking that we'd have a little show and it ended up being a lot um, larger than we thought. So we, uh, I'm, I'm satisfied with the outcome and I hope that it will continue to grow as we discover new talents. I'm sure one day we'll see one of these students here who are competing tonight on a larger scale. The faculty advisor hopes that the event will be an annual one. Several competitions were held before the 13 finalists made it through to the semi-final round to compete for the title. A lot of students were singing off here and there to themselves and I say, look at that, there's talent. We need to get it going for people to see the talent that they have. And the ambassadors, um, we decided that we're going to put it down so that students will be able to showcase the, their, their lovely talents that they have. We put out an ad saying we're going to have a talent show. And it's similar to like how um, a lot of the other talent shows are done on TV and around the world, like some of the more popular ones that we know. And then we said, we thought that we'd get, you know, an average group to come in. And we were so amazed that first we had the first editions, the first tries for it, and then we did some eliminations from that. The event was organized by DSC Ambassadors, a group of 15 students chosen by the college to represent the institution with the staging of events and promotions. This elite group of young persons was chosen from thousands of students who applied and were interviewed for the position. According to the faculty advisor, the students must have a good GPA and be able to represent the student body. And in court news, Dale Smith of Salisbury, who resides at Portersville, has been billed in his own recognizance in the sum of $5,000. Smith is accused of stealing three tires and three rims from a vehicle worth $7,669.66 belonging to Desmond Kelshall of Portersville. The incident occurred on February 7, 2014. He pleaded not guilty. Trial date is set for December 8, 2014. Meanwhile, Louis Saint Solomon of Bath Estate has been charged with theft and handling stolen goods. The charge states that on May 17, 2014 at High Street, Solomon stole one shaving set, one St. Ives apricot scrub, three nine lives cat food, one friskies cat food, and two blocks of cheese from ACS 711. The value of all the stolen items is $99.36. She was also charged with handling these same items, knowing them to be stolen. She pleaded not guilty to both charges. Solomon, who receives station bail, will adhere the, to the conditions of that bail. Her trial is also set for December 8th. Magistrate Bernard Parkett presided over both matters. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights.